Hi, this is a screencast for teachers on how to teach the spiral recipe for Small Basic. So um, this recipe can be taught the same day as square or around at the beginning. Um, houses could be taught second, but um, this is also an alternative recipe. This recipe particularly emphasizes variables. So we're going to go ahead and start with line one, show the tortoise, and we're going to translate that to tortoise.show. Um, that's kind of an extraneous line from when we first started recipes. You actually don't need that, but we just left it in. So you could actually take that out. There's a lot of fake it till you make it in here. So like we've done before, we want to um, have a line show a result. And we're moving towards the use of variables. So we're going to start with line 10, which is move the tortoise three times the current line number you're drawing. And we're going to totally fake it. We're going to say tortoise.move, and we're just going to say 50. And that's, of course, going to uh, create a line of 50 pixels. And you want to really emphasize to the kids, do not delete the comment line until it's fully translated, particularly in this recipe. It's going to help them as they get into the more advanced recipes. And then the um, next line to translate is line 12. Turn the tortoise 90 degrees to the right. So tortoise.turn. And again, they can use turn or turn right if they've just come off of square. They're going to be pretty comfortable with that. And we're going to go ahead and run that. And then that line is translated, so we're going to take that one off. Control L. All right, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, render the shape, um, which in this case is going to come through um, the, uh, the for loop. So do the following 25 times. Uh, because they have seen this in the square, the kids should come up with the for keyword. But if they don't, don't tell them. Have them do a control space and see if working in pairs they can come up with the for loop just by um, going through all the different keywords. This is a great technique for discovery and teaching. Again, point out the documentation over to the right and um, have them read the documentation. So if they get stuck, just say read the English and look at the documentation. Let them discover. It's really, really important for learning. So for i equals 1 to 25, a common thing that kids are going to do is they're going to forget the end for. So just watch out for that. And then we're going to go ahead and run that. Of course, it's not going to turn out right at this point because we've got the tortoise moving 50. So um, what they're going to see is that the tortoise just draws a square over and over and over and over, which is okay, because that'll remind them, and I'm going to go ahead and close this out, that the, um, the line 10 is not completely translated. Now, because they do have the I value now, they can go ahead and work on line um, 11. So move the tortoise three times the current line number you're drawing. This is the same pattern as in square, and we did this on purpose to help reinforce. That, of course, is going to be I times Three. So we're going to go ahead and run that, and we're going to see that that is going to render our spiral. And again, I won't uh, take the time to have all 25 rotations, but that renders the basic shape. So once you have that, then you have translated that line, so you're going to take that off. Now we're going to do some fake it till you make it. So change the color of the line the tortoise draws to the current color. We're going to say tortoise, set pen color, and you're going to um, use the... Um, the slide for the getters and setters here, just like you could use the slide for the for loops. And we're just going to say, um, let's just say purple, just, just for the purposes of this demonstration. So we're going to say purple, and then um, we're going to speed this thing up. So we're going to translate line two here. So we're going to say tortoise dot set uh, speed, set speed um, to 10, and then we're going to go ahead and run that. And that's going to make a purple spiral. Now the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to get this concept of the current color. And this is throughout our recipes. And this current color is a hint for declaring a variable. And we want to just call it current color. And we're going to use the colors object here, colors.violet. Now if you run this, you'll see this does nothing because, of course, we're not calling the current color. So this is an important thing for kids to understand. Again, we're going to clean this up because we've done this. And we're going to go ahead and format here to help the kids see what goes in the for loop. And we're going to take this off right here. And we're going to take this off because we've translated this. And we're going to take this off because we've translated this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call um, darken the current color. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that the current color, um, we're going to set, go ahead and use the colors object. And then we're going to call darken on it. And at this, at this, at this place, we're going to go ahead and say purple using this color. And this won't work, of course. So what we're going to do is run this. And it's really great for the kids to understand and discover why this doesn't work. So if you run this, you can see it doesn't work. And of course, it's because 
the variable is not being used. So what we want to do is we want to say to the kids, where is the current caller in this code, in line 6 and in line 10? So what we want to do is we want to replace the word purple in line 6 with current color. And uh, then we want to run it, and it still won't work because we haven't um, uh, adjusted line uh, 10. So we're going to go ahead and run this, and we're going to see that it's now a lighter purple, but it's not darkening. So um, we've translated this line, but we haven't darkened the current color. And this is a key point of learning for the kids. Um, they might be saying, well, hey, you're calling colors.darken, um, but what you have to do is you have to set the current color variable, and then you have to say, take the current color and darken it. So this is the key line in this recipe because we're using the variable and then we're adjusting the value of the variable. So if you go ahead and you run this, you can see that now we've completed the recipe. Now this recipe is, works really well after square because the kids are feeling really good about some of the core concepts, the for loop, the turn, the move, the I variable, and now we've introduced this idea of the, um, the variables in general. So this is a great recipe to follow on square. You can either do this one or you can do houses. As when you're teaching any of our recipes, we encourage you to teach the recipe, then do an instructor recap, then allow the kids time to, to do guided variations and then go on their own, and at the very end to do the quiz. Hope this helps. For more recipes, visit www.teachingkidsprogramming.org. Thank you.